administration spent more than any prior, $7.8 trillion added to the national debt, $3.5 trillion of that before COVID. So does that mean that you're part of the spending problem? Well, first off, thanks for the question. Thanks for letting me respond to a re reference to our re administration's record. I'm incredibly proud of the record of the Trump-Pence administration. I mean, in four short years, we rebuilt our military. We revived our economy. We unleashed American energy. And we appointed three conservatives to the Supreme Court that gave the American people a new beginning for the right to life. Now, Martha, you asked earlier who's the most best prepared for this job. And I must tell you, with all due respect to all of my friends on the stage, and even to one that's probably looking on, I think unquestionably I am the best prepared, the most tested, the most qualified and proven conservative in this race. I was a leader in the Congress of the United States. I led Indiana where we balanced budgets and had a AAA bond rating when I was governor. And as Vice President of the United States, we spent funding to, to backfill on the, the, the military cuts of the Obama administration, and then we were there in the worst pandemic uh, in 100 years. All that being said, I was the first person in this race to say that we've got to deal with the long-term national debt issues. You've got people on this stage that won't even talk about issues like Social Security and Medicare. I mean, Vivek, you recently said uh, a president can't do everything. Well, I got news for you, Vivek. I've been in the hallway. I've been in the West Wing. A president of the United States has to confront every crisis facing America. I will put our nation back on the path to growth and prosperity and restore fiscal responsibility, just as I did in Congress and as governor Mr. Vice president. and when I was vice president. But, yeah, I mean, we've hold on. Yes. Hold on. I was, so you I were was named invoked. earlier. I'm going to get Vivek first. We'll get to both yeah, This isn't that complicated, guys. Unlock American energy. Drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear. Put people back to work by no longer paying them more to stay at home. Reform the U.S. Fed, stabilize the U.S. dollar, and go to war. The only war that I will declare as U.S. President will be the war on the federal administrative state that is the source of those toxic regulations acting like a wet blanket on the economy. So I'm not sure I exactly understood Mike Pence's comment, but I'll let you all parse that out. For me, it's pretty simple. That's something a U.S. president can do with focus, and I'll deliver on well, it. Well, let me explain it to you. Let me explain it to you, Vivek, if I can. I'll go slower this time. I, you know, I, I sometimes struggle with the reading comprehension. Look, I was, uh, right I was a House conservative <laughs> leader before it was cool. I actually pushed a deficit reduction act that was the last time we actually reduced the national debt in the United States when I was the leader of House conservatives. I balanced budgets and cut taxes when I was governor. I mean, look, Joe Biden has weakened this country at home and abroad. Now is not the time for on-the-job training. We don't need to bring in a rookie. We don't need to bring in people without experience. We need to bring people without experience. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. When you have a rebuttal, okay? And, and you are up, Governor DeSantis. So here's the thing. Why are we in this mess? Part of it and a major reason is because how this federal government handed COVID-19 by locking down this economy. It was a mistake. It should have never happened. And in Florida, we led the country out of lockdown. We kept our state free and open. And I can tell you this, as your president, I will never let the deep state bureaucrats lock you down. You don't take somebody like Fauci and coddle him. You bring Fauci in, you sit him down, and you say, Anthony, you are fired. I just want to respond to Mike for one second, because he invoked me back. Listen, now that everybody's gotten their memorized, pre-prepared slogans out of the way, we can actually have a real discussion now. The, the, the reality and the fact of the matter is... Was that one of yours? Uh, it, not, not really, Mike, actually. Yeah. We're just going to have some fun tonight. And the reality is, you have a bunch of people, professional politicians, super PAC puppets, following slogans handed over to them by their 400-page super PACs last week. The real choice we face in this primary is this. Do you want a super PAC puppet, or do you want a patriot who speaks the truth? Do you want incremental reform, which is what you're hearing about, or do you want revolution? Okay. And I stand on the side of the American the Revolution. Rather we're going to take medalism. control back here. We need everyone <laughs> to have a moment on the economy. Yeah. Uh, I think that's fair. Can I address uh, the COVID there are two people who have not.